Hi, this is Professor Cummings, and I have another linkage problem example that I wanted to show up, or I wanted to give you this this week. Uh, let's see, and we can get right away and start going to it. This one's going to be a little different than what we've seen before. Uh, let me get my pointer ready, and we'll get going. So what we have here is a bar DC. You know, that's this bar here, DC, and it's length L rotates uniformly around the shaft D, so it's rotating about this motor, this drive shaft, with a constant angular velocity of W, or omega. And that's going to be a really important part of this, this problem. So the angular velocity of this shaft, DC, rotating is constant. Determine the velocity, you know, linear velocity, and acceleration of bar AB, so this bar here going up and down the tracks, I want to find the linear velocity and acceleration going up and down vertically, uh, which is confined by the guides moving vertically. All right, so there's a few things going on with this problem. You know, but first let's set up our coordinate system. We're going to just go ahead and say that going up is positive, going counterclockwise is positive, and going to the right is positive. All right, so we know that one. But what we're also dealing with is we've got this relationship between this rotational motion of uh, shaft DC, length L, and we've got this uh, vertical motion, this translational motion, linear motion, going up and down of bar AB. So these two are directly related. So any change in theta is going to cause a change in AB. A change in the angular velocity is going to cause a change in the angular or translational velocity and acceleration in, uh, in AB. So, come on, those two are connected, and that's going to be also become a really important element here. But, what we're also looking at here, is we've got this bar AB, or excuse me, DC, and we've got this angle theta, which is constantly changing. Notice there's no values given into this problem. And this, uh, this, this bar is length L long. So, we can start by trying to get some relationship or understanding of this angle theta in terms of this bar, which is a constant, and where it's positioned at. So what we can do is we can look at that as a triangle. In this case, we can say that based on theta, length A, we know that there's going to be a vertical component to that and a horizontal component to it, you know, as this thing goes up and down. So the vertical can be described by this function here. The length uh, times the sine of theta. The hypotenuse times the sine of theta. And then what's going to happen is as this thing goes around and around, as this theta is changing, what you'll find is that the uh, this L, which is a constant, won't change, but this vertical component, this Y component, and I'm going to call it X and Y components of I and J, this x comp or y component is going to be constantly changing as well. All right. Also notice that because this has vertical guides, AB has no lateral motion. So this type of coupling that we have here, this prismatic coupling, will only allow it to go up and down, and it doesn't have any influence left to right. All right. So we set that up, and there's another thing that I want you. Oh, excuse me. And then we also want to look at this definition of y. So the value of y, the vertical height, can be, you know, captured this way. L, the hypotenuse, which is a constant times a sine of theta. Now, let's go ahead and look at a little bit more of this problem. There's a few other tools we're going to need to, and a few more relationships I want you to be mindful of as we go, move forward, or before we really dig into the problem itself. Alrighty, so First, like I said, there's a direct relationship between the rotation of this shaft, CD, and this vertical motion uh, of AB, going up and down the guides. So we've got a relationship between a theta motion, a, a, an angular motion, angular velocity, angular displacement, with a translational uh, or linear motion. So we can look at that and we've got this little notation here, displacement and theta you know, translational or, or linear and angular. And what you notice is the velocity, angular velocity, 
linear acceleration and angular acceleration are all derivatives of one another. So that's also, again, since we have no values, we're going to be dealing with functions. So we're going to walk through the, the problem and we're going to keep those relationships in mind. Another thing, because we're going to be dealing with uh, trick, you know, trick identities, you know, we're going to have to, and doing derivatives, we're going to have a couple of uh, other things to take into account. The first one is that, you know, when you're dealing with a trig identity, you're probably going to end up having to use the chain rule and you take derivatives. You know, that's because of the way the chain rule works. You know, you got to do something within a function within your, your function. You take the derivative, you take the derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone, and then multiply that quantity by the derivative of the inside function. So again, you can see when we're using trig functions, you know, what's in parentheses, what's being trigged becomes that inside. So you do need the chain rule to take any derivatives of getting, you know, from displacement to velocity to acceleration. The next thing we're going to want to take into account, that we want to keep in mind, is we're going to need to use the product rule. The product rule is if you have two functions and you're taking the derivative, uh, the product of two functions, excuse me, uh, the derivative, you take the derivative of one multiplied by the other function plus the first function times the derivative of the second function. So f prime of x times g of x plus f of x times g prime of x. So these three things I want you to keep in mind, you know, that, that the relationship between uh, displacement and angular uh, displacement is there, that they're all derivatives, and you have these two different derivative rules that you're going to have to follow. So now, with all that in mind, let's look at the problem. All right, so we've already established this. Let me put this little underscore this one. I'll turn this into a pen. So there, we've already established the displacement, you know, of y, and it's in terms of the angular displacement, which is l, the length of the bar, times the sine of theta. All right. So we've established how one way we can describe the position of ab bar ab. So now let's see what we do here. We got that one relation to our set of relationships that I want us to keep in mind. That there is a connection between the rotation of that bar and the translational relationship of bar AB. And we're going to also keep in mind that the velocity, which was one of the things we're looking for here, and the acceleration are tied to that. So we're going to be taking some derivatives. All righty. So again, like I said, there are trig functions here, trig identities here, so we will be using the chain rule. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the first derivative of this displacement function we have. So derivative of y with respect to time, which also means we have to take the derivative of L sine theta to keep that relationship going. So what we have is dy over dt is equal to the derivative of L sine theta. And that's we're going to use the chain rule here. And keep in mind, L is a constant, so it just steps outside here of the derivative. You know, so the constant just moves with the derivative. So we've got the sine, the derivative of sine theta, which is the cosine of theta. We'll leave the inside alone. Then you take the derivative of theta, which is dt, or d theta over dt. Now keep in mind, there's another relationship that I want you to keep in mind. We're taking the derivative of theta, which is just the angular velocity. So what we can do is we can replace that with omega. So now we end up with a velocity of omega times L times the cosine of theta. So that is the function that you can use to determine the velocity of AB going up and down just going up and down. And if you want to test this, what you can do is you can take 90 degrees and 270 degrees and put it into this equation and see what happens, you know, because that's where it has to change direction. So you should end up with this equation, this velocity going to zero. 
So now let's see here. Now we have the next portion of it. We also have to find the acceleration. So in order to do that, we're going to have to take or use the product rule and we're going to, have to use the chain rule. So remember the product rule, you know, you got two functions being multiplied together and taking their derivative. So you take the derivative of the first, f of x, uh, derivative of f of x times g of x plus f of x times the derivative of g of x or g prime of x. So what we're going to look at in this equation is we're going to have to take that velocity equation we just developed this 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 term this function and we have two things going on here we have omega which we can assign to f of x and we've got cosine of theta which you could say is g of x and l is just a constant that's just gonna you know, go along for the ride so we take this and we're gonna basically have to do a derivative of this which means we're gonna do a product rule to satisfy this and we're going to have to do a chain rule because we've got a trig function here and we're going to, have to take the derivative of the outside you know and then we're going to, to take the derivative of the inside so we're going to do two things here simultaneously and what we end up with you know we take again this is if we take this as f prime then we take or excuse me as f of x then f prime is dw d omega over dt and g of x is cosine of theta plus then we have the f of x which is omega times the derivative of cosine of theta which is the negative sine of theta which changes that plus into a negative then you take the derivative of the sine of theta or excuse me of just theta which is d theta over dt so that was the chain rule, and this whole thing in between is the, the product rule. Now, you can remember there's a few relationships here that I want you to keep in mind. dw over d, d omega over dt translates to something as well as d theta over dt, just like last time. So this term, dw over dt, d omega over dt, is an acceleration, angular acceleration. The derivative velocity is the acceleration in the vertical and d theta over dt is just angular acceleration again so we've got a little bit different equation it simplifies a little bit of the acceleration in the y direction is equal to l times the quantity of alpha cosine theta minus omega squared these two together is omega squared times the sine of theta and then there's something else to keep in mind because this gets simplified a little bit it's got a constant angular velocity constant angular velocity uh, let me change this back to laser constant angular velocity so that means that angular acceleration by the definition of the velocity being constant is zero so this goes to zero. This whole term goes to zero. So let's see here. So that goes to zero. And it simplifies our equation a bit. So alpha is equal to zero angular acceleration. So when we get there where our final answer for acceleration is acceleration of the y is equal to L or negative L omega squared sine theta. Again this is Professor Cummings. And that was another linkage problem, a little different than the ones before, but linkage nonetheless. Um, and go ahead and like this video and share it uh, if this is what you're, you're at in your semester or in your uh, education. Or, you know, just, you know, save it to your playlist. And I'll talk to you later.